Hello, it is Wednesday, November 2nd, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Wednesday puzzle today, so perhaps a little bit tougher than we've been, uh, than the puzzles we've been solving on Monday and Tuesday so far. We'll have to see. I don't know. This potentially slightly more difficult edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Camtron Henrik Koskinen and, as always, the inestimable hood monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. If you'd like to join their ranks and get access to the Daily Solve Let's uh, Check the Crosses mug, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. And there's a link in the description field underneath the video, which you can, of course, also click to become a patron of any level and receive all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. So thank you also to everybody who is a patron at any tier of any level for any amount. I do very much appreciate that, and it does help keep this channel sustainable for me on an ongoing basis, so thank you. And to sub uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel as well, that's of course free, as is the Daily Solve Discord chat server, uh, a link to which you can find in the description field underneath the video as well. And you could tell a friend, you could uh, like the videos, all of those sorts of things. Thank you to everybody who's done any of those. All right, let's get on to the puzzle. I don't have a, I'm not as pressed as I was yesterday, but I don't have a huge amount of time, so we'll get going. This was a Wednesday crossword constructed by Ethan Zhao and Thomas Spears. And I think one of these is a debut, the other, it's their second puzzle. I think uh, Ethan is the debut and Tomas is the second puzzle. And we'll see what they have in store for us with their collaboration. So let's start solving. Like the ocean's ebb and flow. I was going to say, I don't know what that is, but then it occurred to me, maybe tidal? Um, the way the ocean ebbs and flows uh, is, you know, due to tidal dynamics. So that is probably the case. Let's see. Only U.S. president also to serve as chief justice, chief justice of the Supreme Court. This would be Taft, President Taft. And blank it all, unaffected. If you're unaffected by something, you're above it all. And the flag carrier airline of Spain is Iberia. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> this is seeming like something thematic. I wonder if we have a rebus today. So if you are new to the concept, to the New York Times crossword version of rebuses, um, what is going on? Maybe, I'm, I'm just, I'm guessing here because I'm, I'm, extremely certain that the answer to this clue is Iberia. Uh, the, so when you see flag carrier, flag carrier is sort of a term, it's not a crossword thing, it's just, um, it traditionally would be an airline that is actually state-owned and would have been the sort of official airline of a given country. That's still true in some, place, in some cases, but in, in many countries, maybe even most at this point, um, the airline, the flag carrier airline is sort of more of an informal phrase applied to the sort of most major airline of a given country. Some countries like the United States don't really have one because there are several similarly sized airlines. But um, but I'm, I'm just pretty sure this is Iberia. Uh, so let's see. So anyway, the point of the rebus is we can put in more than one letter per square and you go into the rebus mode to do that. So it could be something like this. Iberia, I mean, that looks plausible. Could be... Um, like this, but the R-I here. I mean, this also looks plausible. So let's look at the crosses. Tiny Dickens Boy. Okay, well, Tiny Tim from um, A Christmas Carol, the, the Dickens story, story, A Christmas Carol. So that does suggest that if this is indeed what we're doing here, we would put the E-R here, and then we would have I-A. And that looks plausible. So Italian, ah, right, yes. Italian confection brand known for its gold foil wrappers is Ferrero Rocher. Um, so how, that could actually have several rebuses in it because, oh no, Ferrero, is it Ferrero? So E-R here, yes, to assert something is to aver that, to, to make that claim, to aver that thing. So 
Ferrero, and then, in fact, we're going to have yet another one. Oh, that's funny. So Ferrero Rocher, they're sort of, um, it's kind of truffle-like chocolates with, I, th- I think, is it chopped almond or chopped hazelnut or something on the outside? Um, there's an extremely famous uh, TV ad here in the UK in which people are served from a tray containing a pyramid of Ferrero Rocher at the ambassador's reception. And it's kind of portrayed as the the absolute height of elegance. Um, You do spoil us, ambassador, something like that. I can't remember exactly. Um, Anyway, campus quarters are dorms, dormitories. And its spots are actually rosettes. Leopard, leopard spots interesting. So they're not, you know, they're not literal circles, I suppose. Um, Restaurant chain with a smile in its logo. Uh, I don't know. Is it IHOP? I'm wondering because of the crosses here. I-H-O-P, International House of Pancakes. I can't bring the logo to mind, but given that O, that seems pretty plausible. Words said at the front of an aisle. Well, I do would be at the, you know, in a marriage ceremony at the end of the aisle. Could be I do's, I suppose. I mean, you do say that. They said their I do's. You, that, that is something people say. So let's look at this. An oracle, yes, is a seer. And giggle could be, maybe it's just he, he. We're simply spelling out the giggle. Unleaded, so to, so to speak. Oh, so to speak. So I was thinking unleaded. Well, you, that's would be gasoline or petrol, but um, I think the so to speak means we're we're using this in a metaphorical way. And maybe we're referring to decaffeinated coffee, decaf coffee. I'm wondering if that's what's going on there. I suspect it is. Butterflies to be are uh, pupae. So uh, the plural form of uh, pupa, the, um, uh, you know, earlier stage of butterflies before the, you know, they will ensconce themselves in a chrysalis and then become butterflies. Okay, 13th uh, century Persian poet and mystic is, uh, my first thought was, no, Rumi. I want to say Rumi. Um, is a very, very famous and important uh, Persian poet. And I'm fairly certain this is the name. Okay, 20, 2007 Alisa, Alicia Keys album. When I, when I saw the spaces before I read the clue, I thought it was going to be Assam, as in the, the sort of variety of tea, but clearly not. Um, it might be As I Am. That looks entirely plausible. Founder of Heavy, heavy Metal's Body Count. That's a band, I guess. I, I don't know who that is. Home colloquially would be... I don't know. I thought this would be straightforward when I read the clue, but maybe not. Hmm. Not sure. Let's look up at this F. Scatter like a flock of birds. Fly away? No, fly off. Oh, I have to remember. Of course, there could be the rebus. Right. It was, um, the Siberia was really, made it pretty easy because I, I just was certain that had to be the answer. But yeah, I have to, rem- I have to bear in mind that there could be this same thing going on elsewhere. Although there being three of them in this in this long across makes me think it will probably be in other long acrosses. So probably not here. This is actually an unlikely space for that rebus. And that's the kind of thing, there really wouldn't be any way to, to intuit that unless you've solved enough New York Times crosswords to just sort of internalize that typically these theme answers tend to be placed similarly in this kind of way. And you just have to kind of know that. Well, you don't have to know it because you can solve the puzzle without knowing it, but it'll make the puzzle easier once you have observed that. Scatter like a flood of flock of birds, right? So fly off, I suppose. Amen. Oh, 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 hell yeah, maybe. That seems plausible. What about this? Blank Highness, Your Highness, right, in in a term of address. So starts to remove as screws, loosens the screws. And cutesy sound that may accompany a poke. Boop is a very sort of 
um, uh, I don't know. I was going to say current, but that's probably not very current. That's probably decades old, I would guess, actually. But I feel as though the boop has gained new life due to the internet. Okay, slangy command to someone arriving with a six-pack. Oh, beer me. You see that in films about, you know, sort of college students and things like that. So this will have, okay, this will have the ER. Okay, so never mind. Everything I said was wrong about the placement of theme clues. This wasn't in one of the longer acrosses. So it must be the down that's going to have more than one of them. First men's tennis players to reach 10 consecutive Grand Slam singles finals. Roger Federer, right, and there is a name with all of these ERs, and in fact, two of them consecutively. So Roger Federer, look at that. All right. Babysitter's handful could be a brat, a difficult child. Indian flat bread could be roti. Um, it's one of the Indian flatbreads. And intimate apparel and many lawyer puns, briefs, right? So you could file a legal brief, and then, of course, that's going to be used to... in puns about the undergarments of lawyers. All right. Composer Stravinsky, Igor Stravinsky of The Firebird or The Rite of Spring. And subject of study at CERN's laboratory, the atom, right? So that's CERN in uh, Switzerland, famous, uh, famous physics lab. And then exhaust, to exhaust is to tire, to, ex to exhaust yourself, to tire. Okay. What about down here? Blank dare, jazz classic about a toddler's many questions. I can't bring that to mind offhand. Eyelid woe, a sty. You could have a sty which is causing you pain in your eyelid. And, oh, sorry, I was looking at the wrong... I was looking at the wrong... Oh, this will be Dat Dare, jazz classic about a toddler's many questions. And then, sorry, I was looking at the wrong clue entirely. This is deal breaker, question mark. Mm, not sure. Transport back and forth to ferry, to ferry somebody to and fro. Much of Finland's wilderness. Well, it's not fens, I assume. It's not what I imagine Finland being like. Um, not that I've spent much time in Finland. I've been there once. I went to a town called Kajani. It was very, very beautiful. Stiff as competition. Um, fierce competition. There we go. So what is this deal breaker? Narc. Oh, I see. As in a drug deal. So uh, the narc, a narcotics officer, will break up a drugs deal. There we go. Okay. And much of Finland's wilderness. What is this? F uh, fiery, if it had an ER in it, but that doesn't seem likely either. Uh... I don't know. That's annoying that I can't seem to get that. Item split by pedants. Split hair. So splitting hairs is when you sort of make a point of uh, issuing a, a correction or determining something specific when it really is kind of immaterial to the, large, to the larger point. So what is this? Oh, f furs? As in fir trees. Right, okay. I was expecting this to be something that could be used as an adjective. Much of Finland's wilderness, furs, fir trees. I guess that makes sense. Parties that become naps when their first letter is changed to an S. So, right, fiestas change to siestas, of course, from the Spanish. And dinosaur DNA source in Jurassic Park was amber. Right, it was uh, blood. What was it? It was mosquitoes who, which had extracted blood from dinosaurs and the mosquitoes themselves were trapped in amber along with the blood that they had extracted. That's what it was. Okay. Gaming novices are noobs, new players, newbies. And this could be spelled N-E-W-B-S or N-O-O-B-S. Entirely plausibly. I don't know which, so we'll have to leave that for now. Southwestern sites could be mesas, so the kind of um, geological formation. And then when many hibernations end... Um, I'm not sure if this means seasonally or sort of at a time of day, if we're using hibernations in a more colloquial way to refer to just people sleeping. Extremely virtuous sort. You know, there's probably going to be ERs in here. So these could 
heavy ERs here as well, so maybe I'll skip those for now. Small dog's dog originally bred for fox hunting, a something terrier, I bet. Yeah, that'll certainly be, the, be correct. And what kind? I'm not sure offhand. Let's look at these. Bombeck, who wrote Motherhood, the second oldest profession, Irma, Irma Bombeck, and then uh, the writer, and then protein building acid, an amino acid, um, seasons in a way salts. So uh, when chefs in particular refer to seasoning food, they, they generally specifically mean salting or sometimes salt and pepper, but often that just means salt. Uh, and then other, you know, you obviously would add other spices and things, but salting is so basic and necessary that it's often just seasoning in itself. When many hibernations end, April, okay, so it was seasonal, I should have probably guessed that. Extremely virtuous sort could be a saint and La Paz, Bolivia, um, the city, and then two-thirds of 100 are zeros. So two-thirds literally of the number 100 as opposed, to, well, <laughs> two-thirds of 100 as written. The characters that comprise the written number 100 are zeros as opposed to two-thirds of the value of 100. Okay, so that all worked out. So let's, where did we let, leave off? Hemmed and hawed. There we go. Delayed and kind of didn't come to a decision. Underhanded move for an athlete. Oh, a layup. Right. That'll be in basketball. And then notification is a ding or something. Maybe if it's on a phone, I don't, it doesn't seem right. Um, sprinter, that's a homophone of 46 across. Oh, hair. So, oops. Ah, as in a rabbit, uh, a sprinting animal in this case. And it's a homophone of hair, which is split by pedants. So there we go. One mentioned in class notes informally. I don't know what class notes is. What does that mean? Uh, not sure. Notification. Um, way to go in Paris could be uh, rue, rue, rue street in French. And so the in Paris just means we're using the French language here. That's all. Okay. Fallout boy for one is an emo band <laughs> and emo is definitely, I would say if the ode is the official poetic form of the New York times, I would say emo is the official rock subgenre in the New York times crossword. Thanks to its incredibly useful short collection of letters. Um, so if in doubt, in a New York Times crossword when asked about a band, at least consider emo. One mentioned in class notes informally. I'm still not sure. This must be something I'm just, this must be a work of some sort with which I'm totally unacquainted. Shout that may accompany many arms waving. Many arms waving. So it's a crowd, I suppose. We... Do I have something wrong here? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm just going to have to keep going because I'm not sure. Temporary embarrassment in a public co competition, figuratively. Not sure. Rocker Rose. Axel Rose of Guns N' Roses. So one serving punch. Or, oh, here, here's our revealer. In an unusual position in the middle of the grid. Not a dramatically unusual position, but not the most common. One serving punch or parsed differently a hint to 12 squares in the puzzle, right? It's mixer because we're uh, parsed differently. Mix ER, we're mixing our ERs throughout these answers. And of course, a mixer. Is that what this is? Do I, am I missing something here? One serving punch. I guess because I'm at a mixer, punch might be served at a sort of social mixer you might have bowls of punch. I guess that's what's going on there. So the mixer is serving punch. Ah. But it would be the host of the mixer serving punch. I don't think that's right. Oh, but there's a question mark. It's a boxer. <laughs> because a boxer, I guess, would serve you a punch. You would serve up a punch to your to your face or your side or whatever. Um, and so we're, yeah, that, that's much better with the pun. We're boxing ER. They're boxed in to these cells. Okay, much better. I, I'm much more confident in that. So what about this? Right. Bonafide, bona fide. 
and then temporary embarrassment. Uh, still not sure. What about this? Doe could be mula, slang for money. A f blood, temporary embarrassment in a public competition. Oh, oh, bloody nose. Maybe in a boxing match, I guess. I don't know. P temporary embarrassment in a public competition. Oh, if, if this is saying figuratively. Right. So you could say maybe in, I don't know, political race or something, you could say, you know, she gave her opponent a bloody nose because of her strong performance in the debate or something like that. I don't know. Home colloquially. You could, oh, your crib or you live. Founder of heavy metals body count. Right. Okay. This is Ice-T who, in addition to being, that's right. I, I, I don't know any of the, any songs by body count, but I, I have read that Ice-T was, was or is also in a heavy metal band as well as being a rapper. Okay. Um, notification. Oh, it's, it is alert. Okay. We just, I forgot about the ER possibility. So there we go. Alert. And then shout. That's why this looked so strange. Shout that may accompany many arms waving. We're over here. You could say, there we go. And we need the rebuses to, to make that work. So casual getaways are vacays. So it's, it's the sort of word vacation um, we're treating in this casual manner here. Um, and I guess the, I guess the vacation itself is sort of implied to be more casual by the use of that word. Nutmeg's sister spice is mace, another sort of, I don't know, kind of a holiday-ish sort of spice, that sort of particular vibe. Uh, blank hound, a basset hound is a, is a breed of dog. And if you're loath to do something, you're averse to do it. Suff suffix with omni, um, omniverse, um, omnivorous, omnivore, omnivore, right, okay. So you're an omnivore if you eat anything you're not specific to, not specifically herb, uh, herbivorous or carnivorous or whatever. Okay, Friedrich, who created a scale of hardness. That's Mohs, I think. The Mo, that's uh, sort of rocks and minerals and all different things like that can be measured um, for their hardness. And I think that's the scale and its namesake. Radio toggle could be AM, FM to toggle between the frequency bands. And then uh, Sir's sibling. So this is, again, French. This is Sir, French, French for sister, and Frère, French for brother. So we have AM, FM, and a swimming competition is a swim meet. There we go. You could have a track meet or a swim meet. Okay. Oh, maybe... No, never mind. I had an idea about the terrier, but then it wasn't right. Uh, what is this? I'm not sure. Drew on. If you drew on your body of knowledge, you used it. Blank Gerritsen, author of medical and crime thrillers. Not sure about that. Start of an objection. But, well, you could say, but, but I don't think so. You, you object. Okay, what is this? Boxer Terrier, Boston Terrier? Doesn't fit. Oh, that's annoying. I'm going to be annoyed with myself when I see the answer, because I'm sure it'll be obvious in retrospect. Sensitive spots could be sores, maybe. You could have sores on your skin that are sensitive, maybe. Oh, a border terrier, border terrier. There we go. Okay. That's, that's, that'll be the answer. And then, so what is this? Oh, what are the odds? And then gaming novices are noobs, spelled with two O's. And Tess Gerritsen, I must be the author of medical and crime thrillers. So there we go. That was the Wednesday puzzle. And you don't always see, um, rebuses in a Wednesday puzzle. I mean, you do every once in a while, but certainly not not a given that you'd be on the lookout for this sort of thing as early in the week as Wednesday. It's certainly Thursday is when that really starts to become more likely. Although, having said that, I suppose you'd be even less likely to see it on Friday and Saturday in the themeless puzzles. So I guess it's really Wednesday and Sunday that are the days I would really be on the lookout for this sort of thing. Oh, sorry, Thursday and Sunday. And then Wednesday would be, I guess, the next most likely. Anyway, I'm not really talking about anything. So here we go. <laughs> This was the puzzle, and we had our boxer, box ER, our boxer, our boxer who went around boxing up the ERs in Ferrero Rocher, Beer Me Alert Fairy, Fierce, Averse, Border Terrier, and Frere, as well as, I suppose, Iberia, Aver, Seer, Roger Federer, I really like that one, it's just such an er-heavy name, um, uh, We're Over Here, that's pretty good as well. Amber, Irma, and Zeros. So really an extremely densely packed 
uh, bit of theme answer construction because every single one of these was placed in two answers. Uh, and that's not necessarily always how some how themes work. Sometimes themes are only relevant in sort of the across and then the you know the down that crosses that answer actually because of the mechanics of the theme doesn't isn't actually part of the theme. But in this case, I think these, you know, this, this, there's actually quite a few theme answers scattered throughout the puzzle. But of course, the, the, the big highlight ones are the ones with three ER cells each. So we could probably consider these the primary theme answers. Border, Terrier, Roger, Federer, Ferreira, Roche, and we're over here. So there we go. A nice, um, a nice bit of linguistic um, playfulness by uh, Ethan Zoe and Tomas Spears. And that was the Wednesday puzzle. Let me know how you fared with that. Um, there, every time I've noticed, essentially every time there's a rebus in the puzzle, there is at least one person in the comments who was surprised to learn that that was even possible, which is entirely understandable. How would you, how on earth would you know that um, if you hadn't encountered it before? And of course, everybody has to encounter it for the first time once. So um, let me know how you how you managed with this puzzle. I would I would suspect um, every time there's a rebus, there's going to be quite a wide range of reactions. So I'm, I'm always curious to know. And I will just take a few moments to read, I think maybe just one clue from yesterday's puzzle. It's only one correction to be made, which was from Telegnostic, who of course points out a CD as a financial instrument stands for Certificate of deposit, not cash deposit. Yes, that's exactly right. And um, I guess I was thinking cash deposit because when you have a CD, you're essentially holding cash. Um, it, not technically, but but it's it's sort of the next closest thing to cash. And I just mixed it up. But you're right. Of course, it is a certificate of deposit. Thank you, Telegnostic. And then the most highly rated uh, comment on yesterday's puzzle. So I feel almost duty bound to read it for that reason, was from Gary Britton, who said, you frequently say, I have never seen that film. Name your top 10 movies you have seen. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to acknowledge the fact that this was a commonly, uh, extremely highly rated comment. I'm absolutely terrible with lists. I'm really, really bad with just pulling a list out of my head at a moment's notice. I imagine a lot of people are, but uh, I am one who does not enjoy that. So I will not, uh, <laughs> will not partake in this exercise. But I will say in my defense, I think the fact that I'm being sort of, you know, doing this on video and then have to arbitrarily encounter all this knowledge, I think it's fair enough that I haven't seen all of these films. There are plenty of films I have seen. I've seen, I really have seen quite a few films in my life, um, but uh, you can't have seen all of them. Uh, anyway, that's that for today's puzzle. I'll be back tomorrow with a Thursday puzzle, maybe another Rebus, who knows, certainly something thematically interesting. Hope you'll join me and find out what it is. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care.